Prime Minister is in Washington today to seek a military-style economic alliance with the US to counter the rise of China and, bizarrely, the risk of AI. He will also speak to congressional and business leaders about more support for Ukraine. So joining us now is former Minister and Labour MP uh, Dennis McShane. Good morning, Dennis. First of all, can I just have any reaction from you about the news that this court case that we're looking at in London is significant? Of course it is. But an equally significant one, arguably, going on in America, which might see Harry's visa... Uh, rescinded. What would you make of that? And is this the kind of thing Rishi Sunak's going to have to talk to Biden about this afternoon over a bit of tea? I I don't think so. I must say it's a lot more interesting than Mr. Schofield, a man of whom I'd never heard until about 10 days ago, and whom I'm told is the most important human being on planet Earth. <laughs> Harry is important, and what you've just told us is pretty astonishing. If he did not fill in that immigration form correctly, then bingo, he could be back living in Wolverhampton or somewhere before long. But, well, let's talk about this meeting today with, with Sunak and Joe Biden. Um, Sunak might have to kick that issue into the long grass and pick up the phone to him in a few months if Harry does get kicked out of America. But what will they discuss today, Dennis? What's important to them both? It's very difficult to see. I just checked the New York Times and the Washington Post and none of them mention oh, Mr. Sunak's visit. He doesn't have much status in the United States. He's not Margaret Thatcher. He's not Tony Blair. He's not Boris Johnson. Um, Joe Biden made very clear he was angry that uh, Mr. Sunak kept delaying on sorting out the Northern Ireland protocol problem now with the so-called Windsor framework. So that's earned him his entry into the White House. What they're actually going to talk about, I mean, I can go into details. Obviously, uh, Britain supports the campaign against Ukraine. So does the US. So does all of Europe. Smaller countries in the Baltic states are giving a much greater share of their GDP in arms and help to Ukraine than we are. But, you know, we're up there with everybody else. And for the rest, um, Mr. Biden's very worked up about artificial intelligence, but he had a big meeting with the EU on that a few days ago, and Britain didn't even ask to take part in that. So I just don't quite know what's happened to the so-called special relationship. I mean, Joe Biden never mentions it. Not quite sure what Mr. Sunak will get out of this. So his spinners will tell you it's all going to be, it's all been wonderful. Um, obviously, you mentioned the AI issue there, Dennis. So our understanding is that Rishi Sunak wants the, the centre for the policing of AI, the monitoring of the ethics, effectively, and the, the regulation around AI to be in the UK. Joe Biden wants it, understandably, to be in uh, America. That, I think, will be a particularly interesting outcome to see who wields any sort of influence. Yes, America met with the European Union in what's called the TTC, the Trade Technology Committee, which was set up between America, the EU and Canada. And they are in the driving seat of global policy on AI. We've certainly got very excited about AI in, in Britain in the last, what, two weeks, three weeks. It's AI, AI, AI. But the rest of the world has been worried about this, chewing on this bone for quite a long time. And I'd be very surprised if uh, since so much investment's happening in the European Union, so much in North America, the Britain, which just doesn't invest in tech any longer or manufacturing or modern industries, is going to actually grab any big slice of this pie. Well, we, we should participate as a European nation, I think, with the Americans and get in that way, which is more sensible, than try to pretend we're still a superpower. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Dennis McShane there, the line was just breaking up at the end. Um